One of the biggest problems reloaders are having these days is not just finding the primers you want, but how about finding any at all? So you wait, and that glorious day arrives, and you finally find those impossible to find, probably overpriced, limited to one brick, maybe even only one sleeve primers. Maybe they're Magnum instead of standard. Should you buy them? Can you use them? How does it change performance? Today we're going to review some test results to demonstrate how a specific primer can change your load when it comes to velocity and pressure. The cartridge we're testing today is 223 Remington, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I bet you're going to be surprised by the results. The first thing I want to go over when it comes to primer substitution is that you really need to test your combination. I have a video where I switched to a new lot of powder and swapped primers at the same time and went from a perfectly stable load to popping primers. Always start low and work up. I don't care how much your components cost or how hard they are to find. Today's test is performed on 223 Remington, so first let's go over a few basics. If you had your choice of any primer that's out there, good luck with that these days. If you were loading for a platform that possibly utilized a free-floating firing pin, the common wisdom is to choose a primer such as the CCI-41 or the Fed 205 Match AR. These primers have thicker cups and are believed to reduce the chances of slam fires. What's a slam fire? This is when a round discharges as a result of the action cycling, clearly unintended. It's not a question in these platforms of is the firing pin going to hit the primer? The question is, is it going to hit it hard enough to set off the round unintentionally? If you feel your only choice is the CCI-41 or the 205 Match AR, I don't blame you, but I've had a lot of questions lately about using alternatives, and that was one of the reasons for today's test. So let's start by looking at load data. Today's test is going to involve Alliance AR Comp, the 77 Grain Match King, and nine different primer options. After this, hopefully you can get an idea of how any of these particular options may affect their usage if you choose to use them. Our sources of load data today are going to be from Sierra as well as Alliant. The load recipe from Sierra lists max at 21.5 grains, and this is being used with the Winchester Small Rifle Primer. Alliant lists max at 22.1 grains with the Fed 205M. Sierra's data for 223 does have two different platforms. One that utilizes our free-floating firing pin, that calls for the Remington 7.5, and a bolt platform that calls for the Winchester Small Rifle Primer. Not to beat a dead horse here, but let's just do a quick stop by the Hornady Manual. Every single recipe for either 223 or 556 all utilize the Winchester Small Rifle Primer. So you're just going to have to decide the way you want to go. All of today's data is generated with an 18 inch White Oak Armament SPR barrel. Velocities are measured with a lab radar, and the pressures are acquired with a Pressure Trace 2 system. Our loads today were fired with some brand new Lapo of brass, and we loaded each one of these from 20.2 grains of AR Comp all the way to 22 grains in 0.2 grain increments. Lapo brass might be a little overkill here, but the better the brass, the better I've found these velocity charts tend to turn out. The cartridge oil length we're loading to is 2.260 inches, exactly what's in our load data, and we're using nine different primers. When I talk about starting low and working up, I mean it. And to be honest, I ran this test with just the CCI-41 and some PMC brass just to start out with to make sure our expectations were going to be in line before I destroyed $75 worth of brass. Our first test results are what you see on your screen. In the PMC brass, our CCI-41 started off at 24.53 feet per second, and all the way up at 22 grains, it hit 26.36 feet per second. Overall, I was happy with the results, no bad pressure signs to speak of, so I simply mandrel the necks of our Lapor brass with a 222 mandrel and loaded them up. And our velocity charts for the nine primer test is as follows. Now I'll throw this on your screen so you can look at it. You might want to pause it if you really want to look in great detail. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the charts turned out. Are there any real losers in the bunch? Any nodes might be in slightly different places, but at least as far as AR comp is concerned, it looks like good results are attainable. It does seem like there's a very nice flat spot in the Winchester Small Rifle Primer graph. Maybe this is the reason why so many sources of load data use this option. General wisdom I've always heard is the Magnum primers are hotter, and generally that's what I found in other testing that I've done. However, it's not really in the case today. Funny enough, our highest velocity was actually achieved with the S and B primers which is typically one of the coolest primers I've ever tested with. So having it give out higher velocities is truly unexpected, at least for me. But are there any real differences in the graphs? Overall, I think they're pretty similar. If we were to average all of our velocities to find out what the hottest primer was, if we put the primers in order from the highest average velocity to the lowest, the highest would be the CCI 400. Interesting to me that the CCI 450, the Magnum primer, gave us the lowest average velocity. 
For those of you that are always interested in looking for nodes like myself, here's a chart of all of our average velocity. There's clearly a little bit of a dip down at 2,500 feet per second, around 20.6 grains. Though it's not perfectly clear, there are smaller changes of velocity around 21.4 grains, around that 2,608 feet per second mark. Again, that's across nine different primers. If you averaged each charge weight, regardless of the primer together, you'd find that the worst standard deviation was 13 feet per second, and the worst extreme spread was 40 feet per second. Some of you may have caught the 223 versus 556 video I did, where I have 10 different factory offerings that I tested. Of all those offerings, the best standard deviation across the factory ammo over 10 rounds was 18, with an extreme spread of 66. Most standard deviations were in the 20s, one even in the 30s. I went out and asked my audience, what are their expectations for 223 reloads? And 33% said under 10 feet per second, followed by 30% thinking it should be under 20. Under 20 is pretty achievable. But what are our expectations when it comes to pressure? Did any of these options give us crazy pressures compared to the others? Graphing this data looks a little crazy, so I thought I would put it into a chart so you can stare at it to your heart's content. Now please keep in mind that these pressure measurements are corrected to the best that I know how to do at the moment, but they are comparative. They're only looking to see if there's a real pressure difference from one group to the next group. Could these pressures be slightly higher or lower? Absolutely. But it's as good a tool as I know of to compare right now, and I thought the data is pretty interesting. Clearly in the whole group, the highest pressure is with the CCI 450, again a magnum primer. But is there some error involved in that reading? The velocity of that particular sample was not out of line with any of the other data, so it's hard for me to think that that was significantly higher than our other options. In fact, even including that data, if we average all of the pressure of all of the primers, it had the lowest average pressure, just like it had for velocity. So are there differences in pressure? Absolutely. Are they significant? I guess it depends what you think significant is. But if we organize these by the highest pressure to lowest pressure, I'll throw it up on your screen, but our highest pressure was the Fed 205 Match AR, and again, our lowest average pressure was the CCI 450, a magnum primer. So when it comes to velocity or pressure, I don't see any reason why any of these couldn't be acceptable. So far with any of our velocity and pressure response, I don't see anything that makes any of these options unusable. Is it going to affect your groups? Possibly. I don't like to compare groups when it comes to velocity strings because I don't really think they mean too much at this point, but our best group was with a Fed 205 Match AR, and the worst was with a CCI 400. But we're talking about going from just under an MOA group all the way to just over a one and a half MOA. So if you had your choice of any of them, clearly you could be pickier, but it doesn't mean any of them can't work. I saw no pressure signs on the brass during this testing that worried me at all, but only you can decide what's safe for you. But what about factory ammo? If you'd like to see 10 different factory offerings compared when it comes to 223 versus 556, check out this video right here. I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.